What's up, athletes? I'm Daytree, and you're here because you believe that you can max your potential on the tennis court with the law of success, learn, apply, and win. Whether you're at the club level or you're a pro playing on the ATB tour, if you can't handle the high ball, there will always be those certain opponents that you just can't beat, whether they generate immense topspin or just hit moon balls. When the ball comes high, you're forced to hit out of your comfortable strike zone, which makes you more prone to errors, miss hits, and excessive energy expenditure. That's why it's so important to make the proper adjustments from hitting your normal forehand to hitting at a higher height. In this video, we're gonna cover the techniques you can use to handle the high ball effectively. Let's go. First of all, the forehand is much better equipped to hitting high balls than the one-handed or two-handed backhand. This is because with the modern open stance forehand, your arm can extend across your body through the ball more easily, and the height where you would have to switch to a continental grip to slice or overhead is higher. Also, if you're dealing with high, heavy balls that have a lot of topspin, you need to build up lots of racket head speed of your own to counteract the force of the ball, which also is easier on the forehand side. This is one reason why practicing the inside forehand running around the backhand side is a standard movement used at the pro level and I recommend you add it to your training if you aren't practicing it already. First, you wanna adjust the height of your cake back and forward swing according to what you want to do with the ball. If you want more topspin, your racket will need to have a more vertical swing path. If you want to hit harder and flatter, your racket needs to have a more horizontal swing path. You can do this through the height of your take back and the way you hit the ball, which can be seen in the follow through. For the flat shot, you'll need a high take back and swing through the ball rather than up. On a normal waist type ball, you're slightly tilted at about a 20 to 30 degree angle while you're loading on your legs. When the ball's at your shoulder, you'll have a more upright posture. At this position, your normal backswing should have a naturally higher take back. If you adjust the height of your take back with your arms, you won't be able to drop the racket below the ball and this will lead to errors. As you initiate your forward swing and rotate your torso back into the shot, you should adjust the height of your contact again by tilting your hitting arm shoulder up to the ball instead of lifting your arms. If you take your arm above your shoulder, it'll be in a weakened position because the chest muscle can't help as much. Instead, you're using smaller, weaker muscles like your frontal deltoid. Adjusting your torso is a constant no matter what. You can see it on the volley, slice, backhand, forehand, and even the serve. Also, what you'll notice about the swing plane of your normal forehand is that the racket will travel around the rotational axis and become more vertical as it goes up. When adjusting for the high ball, you want to keep this natural rotational force. This means the higher you make contact, the more vertical your racket will be. If you don't adjust the racket, you'll be forced to adjust your arm or wrist into an uncomfortable position that most likely will cause an error. One thing that really helped me was to visualize the racket head slightly above my hand on contact. Depending on where you're at on the court, you want to adjust your swing. If you're at the baseline, keep your arm relaxed during and after contact and extend through the ball more so that the ball lands deep while the slight topspin you've added should keep the ball from sailing out. If you're closer to the net, you can hit flatter and down into the open court because of the greater net clearance. There's a specific shot for this called the dip drive, which I'll cover in another video. But for this shot, your follow through can end as low as the waist due to the amount of downward force. For more topspin, there are two variables that you can use. The first is the tilt of your shoulders and torso. By starting your forward swing from a lower position, you can build up more vertical force coming into contact. But with the normal follow through, your ability to generate topspin might be limited by the lack of space level left to travel the racket head up through contact. Instead, you can use the buggy whip follow through. Due to the increased vertical plane of this follow through and further space to travel over your head, you can still generate top spin when the ball is high. Depending on how much racket head speed you can generate, this shot can allow you to return heavy balls with heavy top spin balls of your own. One important note is that the follow through is only a natural reaction to what you've done before contact. So instead of trying to force this type of follow through, I recommend that you focus on increasing the vertical trajectory of your racket and letting your racket go up and around your head, 
as a natural result of the momentum you've created in the racket. So that's it for this video. I hope you learned something new and enjoyed the video. If you want more drills and notes on this video that you can take to the court, you can download our free cheat sheet that we've put in the description below. And as always, if you have any comments, questions, feedback, be sure to leave them in the comments below. Until next time, guys, go out and train hard. See you in the next video.